When you want to do something here in the motherland, you just happen, you just know whatever you do is going to directly benefit the motherland. Mm -hmm. So it's so much easier to walk in line with that than it is to like know that whatever you do is going to benefit your boss's pocket. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Dream Dua Do podcast. Samia, I'm so happy to have you here. Oh, mashallah, I'm happy to meet you. I've been listening to your podcast, so this is really, it's different to see the podcaster in person. So. <laughs> really? Yeah. SubhanAllah, guys, if I tell you how this happened today, <laughs> literally, last week I decided to come to Hargeisa and I was like, I love Samia. I've been watching, no, wallahi, I've been watching your videos for like the last two years ah, and it was that. yes and it from was, the beginning from the beginning oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so i was like i have to i have to have her on my podcast not just because i like what you do but because subhanallah when i was kind of watching you know your videos i felt like you embody that dream duajo mentality and i was like i need to have her on the podcast so i'm so happy you're here oh i'm so happy to be here so happy because dream do i do like I remember reading the title of your podcast and I, was, I just digested it. Dream, dua, do. And that's exactly, yeah, in that order. <laughs> that's how easy life is living here. So I'm glad you made it. Oh my God. With I'm a one-way ticket. <laughs> with a one-way ticket, literally. <laughs> Sammy was like, are you going to go back? I'm like, sis. <laughs> By the end of this conversation, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh -huh. But no, I love that you said that you love that you kind of like, you know, see that dream draju mentality. But before we kind of head in, um, I do want you to kind of introduce yourself. Some of my uh, community, actually, they know you. But, uh, for those who don't know you, uh, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, I am Sami Hashi. I'm part one of a mother-daughter YouTube series where we showcase the lifestyle living back home. So I moved just about a year and something ago and mom has been living here. So we showcase all the different ways that life would be made easy for someone who wanted to move back here. Mm -hmm. And we also mostly just share and try to get the Somaliland name out there. <laughs> just to hold a presence anywhere about Somaliland, we're happy to do so. Yeah. Mashallah. So that's not all you do sis <laughs> okay there's a lot of things that you're not you know telling us but inshallah we'll kind of dive into that inshallah. um subhanallah you know when i was kind of like watching your videos and i was like okay why do you want her to be on the dream do i do podcast it is because subhanallah you know living because yesterday subhanallah yesterday i was watching your story you're so up to date so up to date. <laughs> <laughs> and you were literally at the beach and the caption was i'm living my dream can you talk to us about that? Yeah. I used to dream, my biggest dream, was to just own uh, or live somewhere on a beach and be totally retired, have nothing to do for the day. And I just didn't know how to get it. I didn't think it was achievable. I was a traveler, so I traveled everywhere. And I was like, oh, I really love Amsterdam, maybe Amsterdam, but there's no beach. Okay, I really love Mexico, but... I don't speak Spanish. So it was just a dream that r was like rusting in my head and I couldn't achieve it. And then just yesterday at the beach, <laughs> just sitting there with my cup of tea, I was like, wow, I found it. SubhanAllah. Yeah. And it's the motherland. Like, duh. Why was that so hard for me to figure <laughs> out? <laughs> yeah. SubhanAllah. So you've been a traveler. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Uh, I spent like... Uh, I was going to say all my 20s, but honestly, since I was 15, I've just been traveling. Mashallah. Just traveling. Mom always says, if you didn't visit the same country seven times, you probably would have finished the world by now. But um, yeah, I was just addicted to travel and every new destination just like brought out a different Samia. So I was getting more addicted to like how much more about me can I keep learning? And then when I came here for the first time, Okay, nothing hit me harder than coming here for the first time. Everything was like, I get why I am the way that I am. SubhanAllah. It all made sense. What Simple things, little things like, oh my God, taking midday naps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's like great. Um, just being stubborn in like a, in your own good way. Because I think one of the best things I love about our people is how stubborn we can be, <laughs> but in a good way. Like we can hold it down for what we want. And, and that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Yeah. I love that. You know, Wallahi, when you, when you kind of talk about, you know, going to the beach, waking up when you want, kind of like living that retired life, literally. Mm -hmm. It is the, the dream that a lot of people dream of. 
and you know it's not that easy to achieve I mean we always say like oh my god I, I imagine me waking up you know and just seizing the day doing what I want going to the beach when I want going travel when I want you know and a lot of my listeners they have a nine-to-five or is also like a, a business um, was it hard for you to kind of like leave that comfort zone because before you did say you had a normal job right uh, it was definitely not normal, but yeah. <laughs> what job did you I have? I had a job. I was working for an airline, so that, hence why I was able to fly everywhere. But I also had crazy hours. Some of my schedules were working seven days on, seven days off. So that's where the whole travel background started. Some days I would work like 24 hours, nap two hours in the break room, come out for another 20-hour shift just so I could wow. get a month, like accumulate a month, and only to move back to the motherland. So I was like, not move back, sorry, to travel back travel. to the motherland. Then, then I realized I, I don't need to continue arguing with coworkers. I could just stay here and it could also be great. So that was like a leap from my comfort zone because I was so used to getting up, traveling freely and going and doing whatever I wanted, coming back to work, collect some funds, go again. But coming here, it was a huge unknown. All I knew is that I had mom here and these are my people, so I speak the language, so that shouldn't be too hard. I mean, it's still hard, but... <laughs> it's a fun letter. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, leaving my comfort zone just meant that I would come here, and I'd definitely not be traveling as much, because it's so expensive. Like, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. So my comfort zone was kind of the opposite. It was just that uh -huh. I had to stay grounded for, ever, for, like, look at me now, a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So... Subhanallah, you were a traveler before, but it was kind of restrictive, you know, in that sense that, you know, you still have to kind of work for that. And Subhanallah, I don't know if you know, but there's like this, this meme going on where like people say, you know, I'm just working right enough to afford a ticket back home, right? And that, <laughs> have you seen that trend? Whoa, no. No? Ugh, that's hard to digest. Yeah, people are like, just move to Dubai to literally, you know, get a salary to move back, to travel back home. Right? So you were kind of in that mentality where you're like, listen, I'm just making money, right about money to go back home yeah. and not just move there. Yeah. I love my bedding. That's all it was. And the money, the, the money I made working just was spent traveling. So then I just was like, am I making any money? Or can I also just live freely in the motherland and just see what happens? Because that, that was my thing. I wasn't making money. I wasn't saving money. I was just stuck in this circle and this cycle. Yeah. So if I could be stuck in this open, free place, still not have an income because yeah. technically that wasn't an income because it was being blown right away. Yeah. But uh, whenever I remind, I just had to remind myself that like I don't do things for money. So go do things because you want to do it. Wow. Yeah. So I love that. I love that whole mentality of like, okay, there was an aspect of me that was working and I was making money, but was I living though? Was I happy? You know, because these are the questions that, you know, a lot of people always have, you know, I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm like in this nine to five and I'm, I'm not living the dream. I'm not living what I want and, and the things that I have in my heart. But I feel like subhanAllah, when I kind of listen to you, there's a lot of like guts. It takes a lot of guts and risks for you to, to actually do it. Um, was it hard for you to do it? Mm. It, it wasn't hard because I'm really in tune with my feelings and my body. So I, I had it easy because I transitioned myself. For, so I've been coming back and forth for three True. years. And every time I'd come and go back, it was the same gut-wrenching feeling. So I just had to listen to that. And then when push came to shove and COVID happened and it was like, okay, you're going to stay here, you're going to stay there. Then it was, that made the decision a lot easier. But... Um, you can make the decision to leave your comfort zone a lot easier if you ease yourself into it. Mm. So those three years, I was just like, okay, it's not so bad. Okay, I'm still having fun. I'm still, ha I'm still having fun. <laughs> and then t I did a two-month trip, and I was like, okay, this is still fun. So it, I realized um, it's, it's doable. It's doable. Yeah. I love about, you know, like one quote comes to mind and that is by Maria Forleo and she says that clarity comes from engagement because oftentimes we do have thoughts, you know, should I quit this job and like, you know, follow my dreams, but it's often like, you know, we're kind of leave it to just, to just this thought, you know, we just think about it over and over again, three years go by and you'll be like, oh my God, like I'm hitting 40 <laughs> and I still haven't done the thing that I was kind of like thinking about and um, you just did it and it was a transition, of course, but the thought and that quote why it comes to mind is because sometimes you just have to 
go and see and test the waters and see if it's something for you. Mm-hmm. You know, a year later, you left your comfort zone. You've moved back home. Yeah, Allah Mabarak. You are saying, I'm living, Alhamdulillah, my dream. What would you like say to somebody who is, you know, at that that point one year ago and is kind of like contemplating and thinking about, you know, whatever it is, this business that she wants to take on, you know, this 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 uh, this new idea of kind of like, you know, moving back home or doing like crazy, you know, extreme stuff that, you know, would somebody consider a dream? Yeah. What would you tell them? I, I would tell them to make a list first. List the things, keep it at a minimum, three or five things that you really want. And in that list, can it be achieved here? Mm-hmm. Yes or no? Can it be achieved where you are? Yes or no? And then just start to like narrow things down. If you feel good about the list, or if you feel unclear about the list, mm-hmm. maybe don't leave yet. But if you feel good and more clarity with that list, then make the leap. I, I remember writing these lists on the back of my boarding passes. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just would write lists and lists, and it was like years would go by and the same things are on the list, and I didn't achieve them. So it's like, okay, I'm wasting time. SubhanAllah. <laughs> time is being wasted here. So, um, yeah. You just did it. You just did it. It was a lot easier because mom was already here. Yes. So I already had something to jump into and yes. fall onto. But even mom, when she talks about how she started doing it, she had to just do it at one point. Mm-hmm. So she was uh, preparing to move back home as every mom or dad <laughs> wants to. Yes. They and, talk about it for so long. Right? Then they start shipping things and who knows, it'll stay in a storage. But when that was them preparing all this time mm-hmm. because when she f- shipped everything she wanted here and finally made the decision, it was a lot easier for her to just jump into it. SubhanAllah. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy to hear that. I mean, now, like, you know, I'm here for a few days and I can definitely, you know, sometimes kind of see what you always talk about in your videos. Sometimes I just come out in the morning and, you know, Dharatan Faris. I always say, what, what was Dharat again? What's the word? Berenda. <laughs> Berenda. Yeah. I love it. And Wallah Alim. And I'm just like, SubhanAllah. Imagine just living here, this weather, you know, that you're literally with your people. Yeah. And. Yeah. One of the like craziest thoughts for me, and I just can't, I never get over it. And, and ironically, it has to do with brushing my teeth, and you brush your teeth every day. So I, I literally don't go a day without thinking about this, is that like I can wake up and brush my teeth outside with like the sunlight. When you're living in Qurbaha or in abroad, you're in an apartment. Your apartment's in a room. Your room has another room where your washroom is. So by the time you see daylight, it's like two hours later. That I don't. I don't think that's natural. No. It's not how the human body should be waking up. No. Never seeing daylight. It's crazy. So it's one of my small joys, brushing my teeth outside in, my in the brinda. <laughs> <laughs> this is my new word. Yeah. <laughs> Mashallah, mm-hmm. seriously, because I can see it, you know. But wallahi, you know, every time I tell myself, it takes guts and it takes, you know, courage to actually take that because a lot of people always talk about it. They come here for, you know, holidays and it's just, oh, my mashallah, nice weather. You know, they go to restaurants and coffee places, yeah. but it actually takes guts because there are, you know, some challenges. Yeah, and even. <laughs> Yeah, like getting coffee. <laughs> like getting coffee. <laughs> Between 12 and 4, you will not find coffee in this city. I but, love it. Um, <laughs> I think even like what makes it harder to remove yourself from, I actually think it's easier to take the plunge to move. It's harder to remind you to keep yourself in check and say you're not going back. Because being born and raised in um, Western countries, it's like you have health care, you have this, you have access, you've got everything. So to know that you're here and you're removed from all of that, you're going to have to pay out of pocket or you're probably you're nervous about what you're going to services you're going to get. It's harder to stomach those things than it is to just to move personally for me. I mean, I guess that's easy because I always hopped on flights. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just knowing that there's like no no looking back. You know what? I love the fact that you call yourself the YouTube channel the Somaliland tourist so I always love the fact that you you know call your channel the Somaliland tourist and I have seen one video where you're talking about the Somaliland tourist mentality because it's just not just a name subhanAllah but it's a mentality talk to us about yeah. this people always say like you're Somaliland tourist but you never leave Hargeisa and it's just it's actually bigger than the name Somaliland tourist comes from um, when mom and I were first running around our first couple months, we realized it's like really hard to stomach some of the different character traits that you have to accustom yourself to. Mm-hmm. So we were just like, 
mom always says don't try to change them which is which is good yeah. when as a traveler you go places and you just go there as a tourist and you're just okay with it you're happy about it you're always going to be in a happy state of mind so we just looked at each other and said oh no we're tourists here this is their land we're tourists here it makes it a lot easier to keep it moving keep your ideas and not get into any any spirals of complaints because it's very easy to do that I love it. I love my bedding. And I'm now that you're talking about this, it just makes sense. <laughs> it just absolutely makes sense yeah. because otherwise we're going to be like, oh, this is not like back home. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's 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 tough because you're always going to jump into comparing and comparing le leads to complaining. Wow. So, I mean, I really think the traveler in me because when I came I was like having so much fun and I was like this feels like just like when we were in Barcelona this feels like when we were in Thailand and it always felt like I was having fun as a tourist so I was like you know what keep that cap on keep the tourist cap on keep it moving and then you're keep it moving and then you'll have like more fun than complaints wow yeah. no subhanallah <clears throat> you were mentioning it actually in a video um and I was like, I never thought of it like that because I do follow your channel and I and I just didn't know why you were calling yourself a Malan tourist. You know, I was because probably you started up, you know, with a tourist and then you, you know, kind of like started to move here, right? So that's what I was thinking. But subhanAllah when you talked about it, I was like, oh, I love this. And I feel like I should be having this mentality because subhanAllah, just like at the when I was like literally flying here, mm. I was like, it's happening at the airport. I was like, kind of like. It starts there. <laughs> it actually starts at the airport. It starts at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> We're agitated. Yeah. About certain stuff. Yeah. There's so many things, and sometimes I wonder what's wrong with me, and then I realize it's because I'm bored in the outside. Things irritate you way too much than they need to, but being here, you see people and they're just unfazed, unbothered, yeah. and it, it just makes me think, like, why do I have this, like, extra hormone of irritation in me like the, it's not fair is that because I was born in the Western countries yeah. they're not really phased here and that is one of like the traits I really want to learn Subhanallah, it's true but a lot of they are unfazed yeah. they're unbothered they just keep it moving yeah they just keep it moving so when you're talking about this mentality I feel like a lot of people <laughs> you know whoever is coming to Hargeisa <laughs> keep your tourist cap on keep your tourist cap yeah. on because I think kind of a lie, you're going to be starting complaining and you're going to lose the, the beauty of this yeah. place. I always uh, say there's, there's a diaspora trend. There's something that's going to happen when you move here. You're going to come, you're going to be here, let's say, two months. But you should stay for a year. First two months, you're just going to be getting your foot in. Around six months, you're going to just be full complaints. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm telling you now, you're just going to be a complainer for six months. <laughs> From six to eight months, you're going to be angry. You're going to start like arguing with people a lot. <laughs> At that eight month, eighth month, you're going to have to make a decision <laughs> and you're probably going to just move back. Well, like, yeah. Or you talk to yourself and you tell yourself, this is not the way. <laughs> like, figure out a way to make it work. And that, that eight month conversation is so crucial and then once you get over that hurdle it's like it's a breeze you're a local yeah subhanallah mm -hmm. wow so i love that I love, because you probably went through it yourself oh yeah yeah and then it's worse because you talk to people like diasporas always you know get together like this beautiful co-working space and then it's so easy for diasporas to slip into this little complaint phase mm. oh man so after having a couple of conversations and I was like I'm just noticing a trend here how long you been here <laughs> you must be in the anger phase <laughs> you're like yeah. I, have a, I have a book for you <laughs> it's called a tourist mindset <laughs> yeah yeah it's really hard to that's probably that's probably my only challenge moving back here is just like reminding myself um it's okay that you are you because because yeah. there's like a fine line between the locals who live here and being born and raised abroad and you're constantly trying to like prove that you are worthy and and there's just like it's a very pivotal shaky point where you can either take it the wrong way or you can keep moving wow. yeah yeah there will be days where you do take it the wrong way just let it out let it out the way they do yeah. but for the most part keep it moving because that's just the way it is. <laughs> so what do you do like with those, in those days where you kind of like, I don't know, maybe regret your decision or you're like a little bit anxious about things. I mean, we all have, have yeah. these days where we kind of question ourselves. 
Um, how do you deal with that? Uh, <laughs> remove myself from everyone. Uh, everyone and everything that could possibly bother me and remind me that this is not like I don't like this so um, yeah I just have to like sit with myself I have to sit with myself I have to distract myself and you usually get over it like the next morning when I go brush my teeth I'm happy again yeah so it's like nature it's really easy to find nature moments here that can just totally change your mindset afternoon walks beautiful where do you walk yeah. since you have to tell me about all these yeah. little <laughs> well don't look for sidewalks <laughs> there won't be any <laughs> Follow the gale footsteps, camel footsteps, <laughs> and then you'll probably have a beautiful scenery of camels, and then, yeah. See, sis, I'm not going to even start complaining now. We're like, hey, listen, this is the tourist mentality, yeah. okay? Yeah. We're just going to follow the goat, literally. We're not going to complain that there are no sidewalks. <laughs> <laughs> just walk where the camels walk. They're probably going to a beautiful scenery. They are. And then eventually, like, I, I don't know, I never get over camels. Yeah, so living here now for a year, like full uh a year and four months yeah full straight one year and four months yeah Allah my badik. Badik. Mashallah. Mm-hmm. would you say you're now living your best life 100 percent. yeah i'm living i'm living uh, like a complete dream and like five times a day prayer i i add all my alhamdulillahs and i make all my du'as and i thank Allah because this is something that is it's like i, I don't understand how i got so lucky Allah my badik. Allah my badik. Yeah, I mean, really, really I mean, increase you. Yeah. It's small things. It's things you didn't even realize were supposed to be the way you're supposed to live. Living with no bills, living like with nature, growing your own food, collecting your own source of water, like just being completely sustainable and independent, it's unheard of. But it's so easy to achieve here. It's so easy to be sustainable here. You just have to set little investments, and then everything after that is is just golden. You still have to work every day. Yes. Yeah, you have to. I have to go collect manure every third morning, <laughs> if I want a good meal. <laughs> I love it. So I'm living my dream, but I still have to like actively work towards it. Let's talk about that because we've talked about the dreaming part, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dream part. Allah mabarik. You're living the dream, but it's not just. It's not only that, right? And you've talked about the dua part. You know, it's not just. You know, we always think like, oh, you know, I put in the hard work, but a lot of it, alhamdulillah, comes from Allah and the dua that you, you know, made. Allah mabarik. But there's also another important component, which is the doing part. Because, you know, a dream is not just, yeah, okay, I'm living my dream. There's a lot of hard work. Huh. Yep. You know, so let's talk about that. Yeah. What is it actually, you know, um, what are the, the action steps or the things that you have to actually do in, in order to say, alhamdulillah, I'm living my dream? Yeah, you have to be so active. It's like, you, know, you have to be so fit. I'm exhausted thinking about my routines. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Because I mentioned, like, we live sustainably, we live with no bills, so if it rains, you are going to be outside, you are going to be changing gutter filters, you're going to be running around, so things like that. We, we eat from our, fresh from our garden, so you're going to be collecting manure, you're going to be, I learned how to cut a lopsy, I, I think you should add that to your vocabulary too, I love it, it's a squat. <laughs> so it's, it's just amazing to me how camel herders are always, like, fit and sitting in squats. And then now that we started farming, it's like the only way you're going to get your work done is if you sit in a squat position. Awkward, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yeah. That you learn, eh? yeah, every day is learning. It's, it's just my favorite part. I thought I was like done with school, but this, <laughs> this is the best kind of school. Mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. So yeah, to keep your dream, you, you have to keep you have to keep going. You have to keep active. Like it's so simple. I didn't learn it. It didn't hit me until farm life. It's just like farm life te- is teaching me everything, and farm life can be applied to everything. It's incredible. Tell us. Yeah. So like you want to eat. <laughs> Let's start there. <laughs> True. Yeah, once you get a taste of like your own fruits and vegetables, you're probably never gonna go, buy, back. go outside and buy. No, really? yeah, you're n- we, we barely go, we don't have a fridge. That should say more than enough. We haven't had a fridge for over a year. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's tied to like our solar system and using what you ha- like, using the energy from the sun, and that's it, and call it a day when your electricity runs out. 
I mean, of course, you can pay more and you can get all the equipment, but the point is to do less with more, to do more with less. There you mm-hmm. go. But um, so yeah, farm life. You 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 plant your your food, they grow. Mm-hmm. You, you did all the hard work. Mm-hmm. You achieved your dream. Mm-hmm. You're eating your meal. What do you need tomorrow? You just ate it all, so you have to go back to work. It's another cycle. The day is happening again. You have to routine. It has to be planned. It's, it's, it's an amazing job. I give it to all to farmers all over the world. It's just it's a really, really rewarding, but it's hard work. Wow. No, and subhanAllah, a beautiful quote. It's rewarding, but it's hard work. And that it is, well, I hate it is when you are working towards your dreams, it is hard work. You know, it's not just kind of like dreaming the whole time, thinking about it. And, you know, there's one moment always where you're like, oh my God, I'm my dream. Like yesterday, it hit you. Yeah. It hit you, really you know? Do. But you're waking, you're going to sleep, you're going to wake up, and it's keep going. Yeah. And I love the fact that you have, you know, mentioned all those things that you do. And a lot of people will be like, okay, sis, is that you? <laughs> Mashallah, you know, it sounds nice, but I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. You, I mean, you always, I didn't, did I know I knew how to scoop manure? I didn't even know how to identify these things, but... <laughs> You just, you really have to, yeah, you learn so many different ways of life and um, they get easier. They're all easier than, than the last one. So now, like as much as it's hard work being a farmer, it's also super easy when you get with the system. So your, your dream is easily sustained if you just continue doing the work. Wow. I love my batting. You know, um, there was like one moment where um, you were saying in one of your videos, actually, that... Um, you know, you now have that farm, that little farm outside. Uh, isn't it Hargeisa or outside? Just outside of Hargeisa. Just outside of Hargeisa. And people, you know, when you were coming, you're coming up with your vision and the dream, people were kind of doubting you guys. You were like, how the heck are you guys going to do like a farming in like that, that small place, you know? And subhanAllah, in life, there will always be naysayers and people who won't believe in your dreams, you know, the things that you have. You have your own vision, right? People may not always believe in it. And you guys were like, oh, well, we're still going to do it. Yeah. And subhanallah now people come actually and look at it and they're like what did you guys do here subhanallah you know it's like a showroom now (laughs) it's like a showroom aren't you the one that said it wasn't gonna work (laughs) we have a lot recognize you yeah there's nothing sweeter than that feeling so the feeling of didn't you say (laughs) because at the beginning um we have a rule in our house you just you don't tell more people about your dreams because it's very <laughs> this should be a rule for life sis keep it keep it to one or two people that you confide in the rest is you letting you're opening yourself for negative yes yeah you're giving everyone an opportunity to knock you down so um yeah you, you don't tell anyone and you keep it moving don't tell anyone keep it moving then you have your dream there it is <laughs> it's 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 incredible. So yeah, people come and they they just can't believe what we did with one plot of land. And it's just like, we didn't do anything special. We just worked. It's a hard concept to wrap minds around, but... You just work. Just yeah. In the work. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I love the fact that you're saying, you know, that you guys have this rule of not telling people. And this is, well, I, this should not be just, you know, a rule. It should be like a, a lifestyle, yeah. you know, where you should really, subhanAllah, I always talk about it, you know. Not a lot of people will, will understand your vision, not, you know, because it's your vision. Yeah. It was planted in your heart for a reason, mm-hmm. you know, and not theirs. And it's not just about saying, oh my God, they don't understand. kind of, no. It's okay, Yanni. I can see the vision, and inshallah, you know, with, with Allah's help, I can achieve that, and you guys did. And I, in that video, I was like, wow, I love, I love these people. <laughs> I love my bed because it is that. Yeah. It's so much easier to keep a positive mentality when you keep things to yourself because uh, as soon as you mention, I'm going to do this and this and this, and then people knock you down and say, that's not possible, that's not possible. Then you're left with that feeling and you're going to vent about it. And now you're on this little negative spiral. You just wasted like another two hours talking about something negative and draining. You could have been collecting manure. Like it always <laughs> comes, it comes down to what time wasting. So instead of, that, it took me a long time to learn that instead of complaining about the people who are being negative about your dream, don't even tell them. Don't even tell them. Yeah. Don't tell people your dreams unless they're a dream as big as you. Unless they have achieved what you want to achieve. Yeah, people you, know? you look up to. People you look up to. Mentors. Exactly. Yeah. I love that, Allah Mabarak. You know, subhanAllah, 
sis, it's not just about the dreaming, it's about the drawing and the doing, and you guys are putting in the work, and you know, may Allah continue to bless you guys, mm -hmm. so you can, you know, I think you have more dreams, inshallah, because I feel like it starts small, and then you see many more opportunities. It's like overload. <laughs> Living here in Smutland, yeah, you could have like a small dream the size of a grain of sugar, and then you have a whole box of sugar. Like there's so everything you achieve leads you to like, oh my god, I can do this, and then do it this way, and then break it into this way, and then you have like multiple income streams. It's amazing. Wow. It's it always shocks me how much easier it is to achieve goals here than it was in the Western world. There's way too many distractions. Tell, talk to us about that. There's just so many distractions. Like you're. <laughs> You just, you're stuck in a system there, right? So you have to, okay, do the system. When you're done the system, come back for your me time. How's that gonna work? It's, it's just not gonna work in that order. You need to have more me time than working for somebody else. To get inspired. Yeah, and to, to feel everything, to, to look at everything. And even just when, you're, when you wanna do something here in the motherland, you just, happen, you just know whatever you do is gonna directly benefit the motherland. So it's so much easier to walk in line with that than it is to like know that whatever you do is gonna benefit your boss's pocket. Mm. It's just easier to stomach the other way around. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like Hagis is for everybody or really just those those idealistic dreamers? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Because <laughs> I could think of so many different uh, people and personalities and characters and they yeah. just, they won't work here. Yeah. Unless they let go. Yes. Unless they just surrender. <laughs> I love it, surrender. Yeah, you have to surrender when you come here. You just have to surrender and observe. If you're good at doing those two things, um, you'll be surprised because you will shift as a person. You just become someone you didn't know you were in a good way. I always, like, because I was born and raised completely in Canada, I'm just shocked at how I'm only now realizing that this is the person I was supposed to be. It's very scary. It's a very scary thought. <laughs> no, 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 let's hold that thought. Yeah. What do you mean by that? It's just, you, you, I never ever would have imagined living here having the opportunity to pray five times a day, just having relaxed conversations, not hustling. Hustling in a different way that feels good. It feels like work. It feels like good work. It doesn't feel like a hustle. It doesn't feel like a grind. Over there, oh my God, even as simple as language. Sure, I didn't speak good Somali when I came, but I still understood it all. And they speak a land of poets, right? They speak so poetic about simple things and their jokes are so easy and it's just like you can go whole days not laughing in the western world and, and you're just mad about you don't even remember what you're mad about you had an argument with your coworker, you came home you had an argument with your family and now you're sleeping wow. that's a waste of a day it is. so i just the, when i look at it i'm just like i did have a lot of fun it was great i had a lot of opportunity but how did i miss all of these things that i was never given the chance to learn and I had to, I had to move here to do that. Alhamdulillah, I was born where I was, and everything happened the way it was. But sometimes I'm like, I look at people younger than me, just like kids, 16 year olds, eight year olds, and I'm just like, they're smarter than me. <laughs> they're like light years smarter than me. Yeah. What do you mean by that? It's simple things. It's like household things. And I always, <laughs> my mom, I'm like, you just turned on your African brain again, didn't you, mom? <laughs> like we joke about it's that African brain. And now when we see things on the streets. Simple, like, of course, they, they don't have everything here. Things are limited. So they've found ways to workarounds. Yeah. And their workarounds are ingenious. You just never would have thought to use that to do that. I just, it blows my mind at how easy I was living and how, how much I didn't, I didn't utilize another part of my brain. Now the other part of my brain is totally lit up. And I am happy if the other side dies, in fact. <laughs> Me. It's just, yeah. SubhanAllah. So what I'm kind of like hearing is that, you know, that you, SubhanAllah, now kind of are living the authentic self that you've been kind of like craving for the whole time. It has been kind of buried, buried underneath, you know, work and stress. And now that you don't have that, you're living your most authentic self. Yeah. And, and, and 
oh, I can't even stress it enough. Your iman is just like light years stronger than it ever had a chance to survive in the West world. It's, it's, it blows my mind every day when, I, like I didn't miss a single salat for like a year and a half. And over there, you're just like, ah, oh, oh, I gotta catch up, ah, oh, ooh. So even just having access to a country that lets you catch every single salat, you're already like elevated and living a much better life than over there. Allahumma batting. So it's not just, you know, physically that you're now, it's even mentally and spiritually that this country kind of like allowed you to live, you know, your most authentic self. Yeah. Yeah. That is so beautiful, mm -hmm. Allah Mabarik. May Allah, you know, put so much barakah into what you are doing, inshallah, and make it so easy to fulfill all your dreams. Oh, I mean. Inshallah. No, I'm really enjoying this conversation, and I kind of want to talk about, you know, your YouTube, because this has been upon I feel like this was not your intention to do it. <laughs> not at all. When I walk down, drive through the streets, I'm like, oh yeah. I mean, oh yeah, I do YouTube. Like, I, I just forget. I, yeah, if that's what, that's the thing that I'm getting. It's like more subhanAllah, your channel, like if I'm like an outsider, it's more like you kind of like living your life with your mom and you're just taking us along with it. But it's not like the focus of it at all. It's, it's more like, all right, we're doing something cool. I'm going to take you guys along. And before you kind of like talk about that, I want to just kind of plug in. <laughs> guys, her YouTube channel like is literally TV for all my family. <laughs> Like literally, we'll let all the we just sit there in the living room and then we watch, you know, her her videos, and we just kind of like reminisce and be like, oh, yay, Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people do that. Wow. A lot of my bed. We'll let all the I think a lot of people are from the diaspora. They're just you know in their living rooms and watching with their family. So I did not expect that. Really? I, I like. Of course, I assumed a person or two watching on their phone. But like to have a family gathering, <laughs> that's wow. I feel part of everyone's family now. Uncle so funny, son. No, so alhamdulillah. But talk to us about that because that kind of, you know, Allah Mabarik blew up. Yeah. Kind of, right? MashaAllah, yeah. MashaAllah, Allah Mabarik. I never expected it. I started it just as documentation. My phone was running out of space I and that. I needed to just put these memories in order. And then, like I told you, I was flying back and forth. So. Um, things were piling up in my phone and I just needed to, in on milk I'll just leave it here. <laughs> then, why do I find my mom watching it over and over again? So it makes her happy. So I was like, okay, that's easy. I can keep doing this. But it also shocked me at how many people were in the comments in one of my first videos that could relate to everything. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. So I, I just sat with that for a bit. And then even on my own personal level, I just was like, I never knew anything about Somaliland. Hargeisa. Nothing. I had no idea. I didn't have an image what it looked like. And now I'm driving through the streets and this is life. No, I think there's more people that need to see this. Yeah. So I just continued, continued. If I'm shocked, I'm sure someone's shocked. That's my mentality. If I'm shocked, I'm sure there's <laughs> other people out there that are shocked. Yeah. So I just, I just kept posting and wow, mashallah, we have a, we have a cool community out there. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you do have a cool community and I'm mm -hmm. alhamdulillah lucky to say I'm one of them. Aww. Yeah, I think I was one of them commenting, you one of your first names. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, she has my last name. Maybe she's a long lost name. <laughs> <laughs> that made it, you know, more special. Mm -hmm. uh, mashallah. But, you know, I think that's the fun part, you know, it's it's all about documenting and then for you to kind of look back and see like, subhanAllah, mm -hmm. look at where it all started. Yeah. And even for the country, like, look where it started. Like, three years ago, someone vlogging and what the streets look like now. It's just, we need documentation. <laughs> we need yeah. Documentation. And then for the homesick diaspora out there, I'm just like, I hope this helps you guys make a, make a <laughs> big change in your lives. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it, sis. You don't even know what that's name. Like, it does a lot, I think, for us just to see, like, you know, to get some inside. Because we're, we're all craving it inside, you know? And your videos, they do have an impact, you know, they do, you know, remind us of that. And we're like, you know, me, for example, now, coming more and more, you know what I mean? Like, of course. Yes, <laughs> that one-way ticket. <laughs> Should have never told you. Right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, subhanAllah. But um, definitely, you know, and may Allah know, continue to, I mean, like, you're really doing something big for the Somali community. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny that you don't know. It just, it, yeah, <laughs> it stomachs me every time because I'm like, I just, yeah, 
it's shocking. It's just me, my front yard, my mom, some streets. So yeah. it's like it's like that's how hungry the diaspora was to see anything about their country. Yeah. So that yeah. should give you guys a sign as to where you need to be, right? True. We need to all be here. Yeah. No, seriously. Not just, you know, also like, you know, just come as a tourist and like see. Yes. But just dip dip your feet in it. If you were born not uh, like in the Western countries and you have not been here yet. Oh, my. You really have to save up for that ticket. (laughs) Yeah. You just have to come. You don't know what you're going to get out of it. You don't know if you're going to like it. You don't know if you're not going to like it. But I guarantee you're going to go back just thinking and feeling something different. True. Yeah. True. Wow. You know what? I want to kind of, kind of go back to one thing that you said, you know, Spanla, you said that this, this country or this city kind of allows you to dream. Can we talk about this? Yeah. First of all, there's so much time. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. There's so much time. If you're unemployed, if you're just living the retirement life, it's okay to sit with time. Time is a luxury that, I, that you don't get in the West world. No. What, so if you have time to think and sit and, and, and then you realize, oh, I want this, and it doesn't exist, that's an opportunity. It's so easy to create opportunities. That thing that doesn't exist, go ahead, pursue it, go find it. I'm sure there's at least five other people that want that thing as well. And that's just, I think that's the easiest baby steps we can make do as developing development for Somalian. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I love that because, you know, Spana, I always say, like, you know, from, like, when you become calm and when you are calm, you get inspired. Because I think, you know, Spana, a lot of the times when we're, like, you know, in the West and working or 9 to 5, we don't have the time to really, you know, think about even dreams, yeah. you know, let alone pursuing them. Yeah. People used to ask me whenever I'd go back and forth back to Canada, they're like, so what'd you do there? And I'm like, Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And that's why I keep going back. <laughs> it's such a luxury to do nothing. And then nothing blossoms into just something organic because it's something you need. And if it's something you need, like I said, there's at least five other people that need it too. So it's worth a business venture. Michelle, so for all those you know, dream dua doulers who are listening and who want a place to dream, to make dua, you know, th- there's no prayer that you're missing here. <laughs> yes. By the way, the Edan is so loud. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's very true. The first t- the first day I came back, I got shocked. <laughs> Five a.m. I was like, "What's happening? You know, <laughs> who's yelling? <laughs> who's yelling? You know, the loudspeaker is so yeah, loud. It's great quality. It's, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Subhanallah. There's no way you're missing Fudge here. Yeah, and it depends on which way the wind blows too. You're either not gonna hear it and you're gonna miss it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think that's one of the highlights of living here is just knowing there's no way there's no way you're gonna miss the the person shouting in the microphone <laughs> so and also you know in Tuala doing if that's you know the place that you're kind of looking for Hergesa is a place yeah it's luxury dreaming doing it's luxury dreaming and doing mashallah yeah I love that so are you trying to like pers- like convince me here yeah are you low-key you know trying to like make me move uh-huh. there's a little bit of motivation here <laughs> <laughs> mashallah so i could sit with here with you here well i, I think the whole day i could be talking and talking but of course you know unfortunately has to come to an end but before i let you go i do want to kind of like you know ask you what is panla you know one thing that you would um what is your goal in life number one and then also what is one thing that you would a message that you would leave for others you know yeah that's um that's cool because uh i don't have uh, goals set. <laughs> i love it too. i'm not a goal setter i'm a really free free person and, and i find that when you set goals you put yourself in this rigid strict uh you have to achieve it, I love it. and that's very stressful yeah whereas if you can just uh, intentionalize it then you can you could just let that happen and like I said it's luxury dreaming do I do here so with all that dua, I, I think it's very easy to achieve what you want by not making it a goal I know every motivational speaker <laughs> thinks otherwise you have to have goals make goals achieve goals but I think that goals lead you down a strict one-way street and you're gonna miss all those other opportunities so you got to keep it flexible. I love it. So I was literally talking about this uh, goals versus intention. 
And I love the fact that you just said it, you know, intentionalize. Yeah. So what's your intention? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get there. <laughs> we don't even have to talk about it, but what is one message that you want to leave? You know, it's probably we're all going to die. You know, my life is all a good ending. But what is the one message if you had one? You know, what would that be? Yeah, my message is definitely specific towards anyone who was born not in their motherland. Um, I think that you really, really need to make a conscious effort to get here and experience it because there's another side of your brain that's not turned on, the African brain, and there's another, there's just, there's another you in there that you don't know of yet, and it needs to be unleashed. You need to give it a chance. I love it. You need to give it a chance. Yeah. Sis, I think you low-key are convincing. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> Ticket, eh? mm -hmm. <laughs> just give it some time just give it six months feel it out and then uh then we'll, we'll, we'll have a part two here <laughs> we're, this is, we're definitely gonna have a part two inshallah. inshallah and then we'll see you know that farm i think they will definitely extend inshallah, inshallah. and next time we're talking i want to hear all about it mm. inshallah I'll bring some veggies oh my <laughs> sis i think we're, maybe we're gonna cook what do you think oh uh, yeah do like a cooking live podcast session, eh? That's doable. I'm not. I'm not a good cook. I'll bring. <laughs> I'll bring the veggies. <laughs> Me neither. Sis. Yeah. Okay. We'll get mom involved. There you go. You know, that's an idea, eh? Mm. Sis, it was so good having you here. <laughs> you as well. It was super nice to meet you. No. Aww. Inshallah, definitely part two. Yeah. Inshallah. Let's do it. All right. Assalamualaikum. <laughs>